All right, today let's talk about keyboard hackery with carabiner elements. I'm gonna walk you through what's in my config and what's been working for me. Stick around. Carabiner elements. So I'm gonna assume that if you're watching this video, you know what it is. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but basically it is keyboard hackery um, to do anything you'd possibly want to with your keyboard um, from the Mac. So funny story, I actually learned about carabiner elements because I had a MacBook, um, one of the ones that with the unibody that the keyboard was crap on it. And I actually took a Anpro 2 and I was like, I wanna use this with my MacBook. And so I actually cut a piece of wood and sat it on top of my MacBook and the Anpro fits perfectly on top of the MacBook. And uh, I posted that on Reddit because I thought it was so clever. And someone was like, hey, when if you use carabiner elements, you can turn your keyboard off when you plug in your keyboard. You don't have to do all that crazy woodworking. And uh, yeah, they were right. And ever since I've started using carabiner elements and I've thrown the wood away. But um, yeah, you can literally do almost anything. Fast forwarding through that, I wanna talk about the actual modifications that I use on a daily basis. The big ones, being um, O-launching. So O-launching is something I first learned about from a video that Jesse Skelton did, and I thought it was crazy. So basically what you can do is you can hold a key on your keyboard and then tap another key in combination with it and have carabiner elements launch or do some action in response to it. So I use it to launch applications that I use frequently. Um, so I tried it on O. I started with O as Jesse had done it. And what I found was, I type quickly and I would trigger it incidentally even after like tweaking the parameter. So O just wouldn't work for me. So instead I use a uh, right facing bracket, open bracket and um, use that with it. So for instance, if I use right bracket and M, it's gonna pull up Spotify and then I can do it with literally anything else. So like right bracket plus E for my code editor will bring up Sublime. Um, any application I want. So like before this, I used to alt tab and you'd alt tab for a while trying to find the one you want. And now I can just press bracket, hold bracket and press the key that I want for any application I want. And I don't have to care which window it's on. It'll load it up, um, which is fantastic. So I can do that with tick tick. Um, it's on this other screen, so you can't see it. Um, but I have it for almost any application that I use on a regular basis. So command G will go to Chrome. Sorry, not command. Bracket G will go to Chrome. Um, and then I've got the full list here. So this has been something that has made my life so much easier from a movement perspective. And, and I never use alt tab anymore <laughs> at all. Um, so I've got my list here. Feel free to use those for inspiration, but you can set those to literally anything. So I will include my config down in the description of the video if you wanna look at this in depth, but I'll just show you at a high level how this functions. And so if I scroll down, O launcher, here you go. So it's this block here. And you're basically saying, when I simultaneously press open bracket and a specific key, and then I've got these options set up, um, I want it to run this shell command to open Spotify.app. And in all of these O launching commands all follow that same pattern. It's basically open dash A and then whatever the name of the application is on your Mac. So you can literally copy this manipulator block right here and paste another instance of it right below here and just change the key command you want and what application you want it to load and you're good to go. So take 10 minutes and look at the applications that you use regularly and set those up. And then over the next day or so, you'll find a couple that you missed and it's pretty easy to add those thereafter. So next up is setting a hyper key. So a hyper key is basically what you can press one key and get command alt control all at the same time. So instead of having to do this carpal tunnel thing where you move your fingers off the home row down to the bottom and then press another key, you can just use hyper instead of cap lock. So I don't commonly use caps lock. Um, my wife actually does and I give her hell about it all the time. Um, but for a long time I had caps lock and the only thing that was really there was for me to accidentally hit and then realize caps lock was on and then turn it back off. And so, um, I finally adjusted to using caps lock as hyper. And so if I hold it, it'll do command option control. And if I tap it, it'll do escape pretty common thing there. And then that gives you a whole nother set of keyboard shortcuts that you can then use from the home row. So I use it with amethyst to drive all of my 
application movement. So like if I bring carabiner elements back, if I hit hyper enter, it's gonna toggle between full screen and tiling. And so now I can then use hyper S to move which application is focused or hyper X and C to move an application around. And then if I use hyper Z, I can move it to the window to the left and hyper V uh, movement to the right. So I've got a whole video dedicated to that. I will link that up there, um, but that's part of how I use hyper. And you can use it for even more things. I try to be able to do it with just my left hand. So I hold hyper with my pinky and then I use the rest of my left hand to be able to hit all the commands around there. So the other piece there is I also do hyper um, arrow keys. So I do hyper plus I, J, no, not I, huh, this is misspelled. I also do hyper H, J, K, L um, to do Vim style arrow keys. So I can leave my fingers on the home row and be able to move my cursor up and down. So for instance, if I've got some text here, I can basically leave my fingers on the home row, hold hyper with my pinky and press K to go up, J to go down, H to go left and L to go right. And I don't have to use Vim. Um, I like Vim, but the idea that I can't use the Vim keyboard shortcuts everywhere is a little bit of a deal breaker. I use more applications than just an editor and it makes it really hard to commit to the Vim um, escape to toggle out of editing mode. So um, I, this is my like in between where I get some of the benefits of it without having to tweak every application that I work with. So the last bit is just some minor modifications to the fact that I use a 65% keyboard that doesn't have a tilde key. And so I have mapped shift plus escape to tilde so that I can do tildes for coding um, frequently because I use them all the time and there's no key for it. So um, that's the only one that I have in Carabiner Elements. I've got a number of other ones that are baked into my drop config and via directly in the keyboard itself. Um, so if you're interested in that, let me know and I can create a video on that. All right, so that is my Carabiner Elements config. Again, I'll link that below. Um, let me know what's in your Carabiner config because um, maybe there's something I'm missing that I should be using. Anyway, thanks, have a great day. Hey guys, before you go, if you enjoyed the video, please tap the like button. If you didn't, then that other button works too, and you can help me out a ton by subscribing to the channel. Thanks, have a great day, peace.